Ben Pierce on the Rosa Tracker here, and today I want to talk to you about how do you actually get a human mission to Mars that's something reasonable. Now there's a lot of different key things that you can focus on. I'm going to focus on one specific thing, which is in situ resource utilization, ISRU. The idea is when you had ancient explorers that went to go find things on the surface of Earth, they didn't take everything they needed for the return voyage home. You know, Columbus sailed across the ocean, he sailed to the Americas, he stocked up on water, stocked up on food, and then voyaged back across the ocean. Now, he could have turned around and came home if he wasn't able to find anything, but there was a limit to how much he could do, and all of the ancient explorers did this. They lived off of the land which allowed them to continue further forward. When we're going to Mars, we're going to probably have to do this. This will dramatically make a mission easier. Now in a future video, I'm going to talk about what it would take to do with NASA's SLS rocket without ISRU. But for the purpose of this video, let's just talk about what you can actually do. So there are three primary things that ISRU is going to be used for early on. The most important thing is the ability to refuel your spacecraft. Why is this important? Well, if you can refuel your spacecraft while you're on Mars, that saves a significant amount of payload capacity. You'll have double the payload capacity. To take the fuel to get back, you'd have to double or maybe even triple the amount of mass that you launch. And so instead of launching one heavy rocket, you're going to have to launch three of those. That just makes things so much more complicated. So if you have the ability to refuel from the surface of Mars itself, then it works well. And how do you do that? Well, the first primary resource is carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere of Mars. It's readily available. You can compress it very easily and run that through a Sabatier process that will allow you to generate methane. You can get some oxygen from it and bottom line, you can make it work really well. But this isn't the end all be all of missions. It would be even better if you could bring some water with you because water is required or at least hydrogen to make this rocket fuel really, really work. So if you have water and you have carbon dioxide and you have enough energy, you can make the rocket fuel to get you back home, especially with something like a methane powered engine like the Raptor engine that SpaceX is going to use with their Starship mission to get to Mars. The carbon dioxide, as I said, is easy. How do you get the water out though? Well, it turns out the water is actually everywhere on the surface of Mars, although in varying concentrations. If you take some of the dirt on Mars and you heat it up, such as this solar still that was done in the desert in Arizona, it will produce a little bit of water. Now, it's not going to be a lot. The solar still produced only about a quarter of a cup per day, which is not very much. The amount of dirt that you have to process is enormous. You only get about a tenth of a percent, so one part in a thousand, by weight of water out of just the loose dirt. But loose dirt is easy to dig up. You just go heat it up, you get your water out of there, and then you can dump it and do something else with it, such as maybe use it for a radiation sandbag, which is another thing you might use ISRU for. Once you land on Mars, you can take this spent dirt, you put it on top of the roof, and you have a lot more radiation shielding than just the th relatively thin metal that you might have. And it's easily available. Okay, so how else might you get water? Well, the next best thing is some kind of a clay system. Now, clay has maybe 15 to 20 percent water by weight on Mars, which is amazing. But clay is not found everywhere on the planet, but that's okay. It's found in some of the equatorial type regions. Curiosity right now is actually exploring areas that have clay, so it's easy enough to find. But you have to do a lot more complicated processing. You have to do some crushing, some grinding, some heat, and all kinds of things. So you're going to have to have a lot more equipment to get to the surface of the planet to really mine this effectively. 
And keep in mind, if you're sending humans there, this is really a major risk. If you don't have the equipment to process it to get your fuel home, at the very least, you're going to have to stay there for another two years, maybe even longer, so that you get all this required equipment so you can refuel your spacecraft to get home. Okay, so what would be the best option? The best option is to dig pure water ice. Now, pure water ice is found on Mars, but it's only found in the polar regions. So it's a lot harder to get up there. You have to be about 38 degrees north which is reasonable, but it's a lot darker there and colder and it just kind of complicates things. It's about the furthest north that you would want to send a human mission. A lot of the areas that are being explored though for human missions are in fact at about this latitude for this very reason that they have liquid water. And if you have liquid water, you also have a source of drinking water, which is a huge advantage, but I suspect that most of this I suspect that most of the water initially will be used to refuel the spacecraft. They'll gradually start to drink it, maybe they'll use it to water some crops or something like that first. And then as they get more and more comfortable with it, then they'll consider drinking it. Okay, so what other issues are there? Well, we have a pretty good understanding of where water ice is fairly deep underneath the surface, but nobody really expected to find water ice close to the top of the surface. The instruments that we've sent have been looking deeper and so we don't have a really good understanding of where this water ice is. That's a really important question that needs to be asked. And it's probably a good idea to solve it. Now it's relatively easy to solve, you just have to build an instrument that's meant to detect it. But we haven't really done that yet so hopefully they'll work on something that can get it in a relatively easily diggable range so that way we can explore the surface of the planet. Hopefully some mission that's coming in the next few years will be able to do this a lot more accurately. The third thing that would be useful in terms of in situ resource utilization is using some kind of cement. Now cement could be used for a lot of different things. One of the most important things early on though is to make some kind of a really good landing pad. Why is this important? Well, the dust on Mars is really rough. It's not as bad as on the moon, but you don't want to be messing with this stuff. And if you kick it up, it's going to go everywhere. In this Apollo 17 video, you can see the spacecraft taking off and you see some of the dust coming out as the humans were leaving the surface of the moon. On Mars, it's going to be similar level of bad and they're going to be much bigger rockets. So you don't want to be messing with stuff. It'll cause all kinds of damage and you just don't want this. But if you have a cement landing pad, then it's not going to do this. So hopefully we can get this figured out so that we can safely land the astronauts and launch them from the surface without kicking up a bunch of dust and ruining whatever kinds of experiments or the habitats that they're doing. That would be really, really nasty to go all this way and lose everything as soon as you launch because of the dust. Bottom line is, in situ resource utilization makes a mission to Mars much, much easier. And it's going to be required eventually. You can do a mission to the moon relatively easily, although a lot of the same water sources that exist on Mars will also exist on the moon. Not so much the clay, but the other stuff does, if you know where to look for it. But you have to be able to find it first and then make use of it. On the moon, they don't have carbon dioxide, so they'll probably use just hydrogen and oxygen to create the rocket fuel to get back. It should work pretty neat. But thank you much for joining me. Let me know whatever questions or comments you guys have about in situ resource utilization down in the comments below. Feel free to check out one of my other videos that I talk about how we get humans to Mars. And until next time, keep on tracking. Take care.